So we will continue with the uh, second part of uh, formulation of strategy, and that is setting objective. Now, in order to set uh, effective uh, objectives, it's very important that you are able to uh, create objectives that can uh, be linked to strategies and uh, performance of your organization. We, in a very short, uh, uh, in, a, in a couple of uh, minutes, we will see an approach to creating uh, good objectives. In order to be able to, to link your strategies with clear objectives, activities that you will perform to achieve those uh, objectives, and assessment of your uh, performance, you can create uh, a, a table that shows uh, performance indicators, the time, fr uh, time frame that you want to achieve these uh, uh, indicators or objectives. Now, we know that resources are always scarce, that you cannot have all the resources that you, uh, you need in the world to, to accomplish all the objectives that you, you have. And this means that you need to prioritize, that you need to rank your objectives in order of importance, starting with more pressing objectives at the top, uh, those that are not that important are, are, are at the bottom. Now, as a framework of how your objectives should uh, look like or the how they should sound out, we have this uh, objective uh, 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 framework that we call smart objectives, saying that your objectives have to have five characteristics or five attributes. Smart S stands for specific, that you need to create uh, specific uh, objectives as opposed to vague objectives, that two general objectives cannot be, uh, can hardly be, uh, be uh, can, pro can hardly provide direction uh, for action for your organization. So it's very important that you create uh, objectives that are uh, specific, well-defined, in detail, and state exactly what is it you want to achieve. And then second, you need to have uh, measurable uh, objectives. And that is, you need to assign some attribute in order to create a metric that eventually can be used to, 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 to assess th this uh, objective. So this could be a financial metric or customer satisfaction uh, metric. For instance, you can create an, an objective uh, to improve your customer satisfaction by improving your uh, performance on the customer uh, index, such as uh, Kunda uh, Barometer. In Norway, they have it, a customer satisfaction barometer, where uh, each year uh, customers vote for the companies with the satisfying uh, service or with the best service. And you can uh, use that uh, as a metric for your uh, objective to improve uh, customer, your customer satisfaction. That is by saying maybe you want to move uh, two or three positions higher in, in the ranking. And that is measurable because in the end you can easily assess whether you have achieved that or not. So the point is you need to have objectives that are measurable. And then the objectives have to be uh, actionable. And that is you, uh, you have to have uh, uh, objective, uh, objectives that can are uh, doable that you can assign and in fact you have to identify uh, who will be assigned to, to those uh, uh, objectives, something that you can do. And then you have to have objectives that are relevant to, to your business, that is they solve a, a specific problem in, in your, in your uh, business. They produce certain results, they are reasonable, realistic. And that's what it means by having uh, relevant uh, obje objectives. And then finally, you need to have uh, uh, objectives that are uh, time related. That is, you can specify uh, a period, a time frame in which that you would like to achieve these 
uh, objectives. We, we cannot say that I want to be, I want to have, uh, to achieve high customer service in my business without specifying of the time frame when you want to achieve this. So it's very important that when you state an objective, it has to be uh, time related, that it should have a specific time frame that has, it, it has to be achieved. Now, there are three approaches that you can use to, to, to set uh, objectives. And with respect to online businesses, uh, one approach is uh, to estimate online revenue contribution. And this re reflects to objectives that have financial uh, metric that can be assessed uh, financially. Specifically, we are talking about revenue. So in order to be realistic, to create uh, uh, objectives that uh, are realistic, that are achievable, you can use online uh, revenue contribution. And what this means is assessment of the potential direct and in indirect contribution from the internet sales. And usually, you express this as percentage of overall uh, sales revenue. So what we are doing with uh, online revenue contribution estimation is uh, to, to estimate, to assess how much revenue your business can generate from direct uh, sales and from indirect sales, and use it uh, as a basis for setting your uh, objective. And to know how much you can generate from indir indirect sales or direct sales, usually you would refer back to the uh, previous uh, st stages that we have gone through in strategy creation, that is demand analysis and competitor analysis. That is assessment of the existing uh, customers as well as potential customers and how many of those customers can be stolen by your competitors. So you have to assess uh, your, your competitors, the existing uh, customers, and potential customers in order to be able to estimate your revenue. Another approach to uh, setting your objective is uh, convention modeling. And this is applicable for the sales side e-commerce. And conventional models or waterfall models or, uh, of marketing or web marketing are the models that help you to estimate uh, the sales, uh, final sales for your, for your uh, products. And here is an example of, uh, of a conventional uh, model. So basically, you look at the different channels that your business uh, is using. In this case, both traditional channels and electronic channels are used. And it is estimated that 1 million customers can be exposed through electronic channel, and 1 million uh, customers can be uh, reached through traditional uh, channels. And then you can estimate out of those uh, 1 million, how many will respond. And in this case, the estimate out of 1 million, 5 uh, percent will respond, and 5 percent from traditional uh, channels will contribute to electronic channels. And these are people that research in physical stores, and they move on to the electronic channels. So you have out of uh, 1 million uh, customers, 5 percent after researching on the physical stores will go search for your uh, products online. And then you have five customers that search uh, uh, online that have responded to it. So 5% of 1 million plus 5% of 1 million from electronic channels, you have 100,000 uh, unique visitors to your website. But we know that when people visit your website, it's not necessary that they will buy products. So you, c you also have to estimate the percentage of leads that could be generated from channel. And when we talk about leads generation is uh, the amount of interest that you can create, that how many of those that visit your site will be interested in your products. And in this case, it is estimated that out of the 100,000, uh, 10% will be interested. 
but also we have a contribution of 1% from those that were uh, visiting the phys physical stores and they contribute 1% of those that become interested on the uh, uh, online channel. And from lists uh, generated, we know that people could be interested in your products, but they may not buy. So you have to move down and estimate how many of those that are interested in your products will actually buy the products. And that is what we have the outcome. So this is an approach that helps you uh, to come up with a, an estimate figure of how the potential revenue that you can generate, that the amount of sales that you can generate. And the main idea is just to go stage-wise, that from people that could be, you could reach through your marketing efforts, through your uh, channels, to those that will respond, to those that will express interest, and down to those that will finally uh, buy products from your business. And this is what we call uh, a, a waterfall ap approach uh, to setting objectives. So from this estimate, then you can set an objective that this is how much I want to sell. And the figure is based on the uh, uh, computation that you, you have made through uh, conversion modeling. And the third approach is the, the balance the scorecard to uh, uh, setting an objective. We know most businesses are very much obsessed with financial metrics, that when it comes to setting objectives, when it comes to setting goals, the focus is usually on financial uh, uh, aspect of business. But the balance scorecard also provides a framework which takes into account uh, other uh, aspects or other metrics that are also relevant uh, to a business. And this is uh, uh, metrics related to customer uh, uh, issues, internal efficiency uh, measures, financial measures, of course, and innovation. So we will look at, at, at this. So the balance score at, at the center of your balance scorecard is uh, the vision and strategy of your business. And then you have those uh, main four aspects of your business. So you have the uh, financial aspect. And the key question is, in order for you to, 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 to succeed fi financially, how should you ap appear to your shareholders? And these are people that are investing their money in your, uh, your business. So you want to set objectives and measures as to, how, to what extent you will meet expectations of these uh, shareholders. So you, have, you specify the different ob objectives that you want to, to meet, the measures that you will use to assess whether these uh, objectives have been uh, achieved, the targets and initiatives. Yes? Are shareholders the type of Yeah. Because but stakeholders is a general term of people that are directly or indirectly affected by our business. So the community around your business is a stakeholder to your business. And in this case, shareholders are individuals that actually invest in your business. They are also stakeholders. And then you have internal business uh, processes where you, you, you ask your, you, you, yourself, if you want to satisfy your customers and your shareholders, what kind of business processes, what kind of business activities that you, you, you might be uh, excellent at, you might excel at. And then you set objectives for the different activities that your business uh, uh, performs, the measures that we use to assess whether these activities uh, have been uh, uh, successful or not, set targets, and the initiatives that you will uh, take in order to, to achieve those uh, activities. And then you have learning and growth. And that is, if you want to, to achieve uh, the, the, the vision or the, uh, the, the goals that you have, how will you sustain your ability to, charge and, uh, to change and improve? But because we know that uh, the business environment is dynamic and as such, you need to be able to respond to the changes that happen in the business environment. So you have to set uh, objectives of how are you going to
cope up with the uh, changes that happen in your uh, competitive uh, landscape. And just as in the other uh, aspects, you will also have to define objectives for, uh, for learning and growth, measures, targets, and initiatives. And finally, customer. You have to do the same. If you, you, you have to uh, reach uh, to achieve or realize your, your, your vision, how should you appear to your customers? What do you want to do to your customers? Set your objectives, measures, targets, and initiatives. So basically, what the balance scorecard provides you with a framework for generating objectives, metrics, targets, and initiatives. So it's a framework, it's a guideline on how you should set your objectives and which key aspects that you should consider uh, for your, uh, your business. In the part two uh, or part B of your assignment that will be released uh, next week, this will be one of the uh, assignments uh, that you will have to create the balance scorecard for the business I idea that you have uh, generated. This and two other uh, uh, questions. And that will be the, the last part of the assignment. And it, the final output, which will also include the balance scorecard, will is the one that will be evaluated for approval of the, of the assignment. And then after creating uh, objectives, then the third step is to create the strategy, how to achieve those uh, objectives. Uh, it is very uh, uh, important to, 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 to know that the strategy will always be driven by objectives, that you, you, you have objectives that you need to, to achieve, you have a vision that you see your business, uh, how it will be like after a certain period of time, and then you create an approach to achieving uh, these objectives and realize your, your, your vision. In order to come up with this approach, you will force a, uh, you will face a number of alternatives that always there will be different alternative paths that you would follow in order to realize uh, the objectives. If there was only one way to achieving objectives, then there wouldn't be business and there would be co competition because everyone would follow that path. But as long as we always have uh, different uh, alternatives, and that's where the role of manager uh, kicks in, that you have to evaluate the different options, the different alternatives that you have, and select uh, the one that is uh, suitable for your, uh, for your organization. And this results to strategic decisions that uh, uh, a manager is faced uh, with. And in this uh, course, we will address eight uh, key decisions that as a manager of a digital business that you will always uh, face when you when it comes to creation of a uh, strategy for your, for your business. Now, for each of these decisions that we will look uh, in a few minutes from now, there will be various alternative paths that you have to, to follow. And you have to select uh, one of these uh, paths ev eventually. Now, in order to, to, to do that, it is very important to have uh, a kind of uh, framework for selection of strategies. And in this case, we use the, the matrix for evaluation of uh, uh, strategy. And what basically this matrix says is a cost benefit analysis. That is, the cost of following a certain uh, course of action as opposed to benefit of that, uh, 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 following that path. So be pretty much comparison of what benefits do you achieve by following this path? And what are the cost implications of that path? So here you have uh, organizational uh, value and fit, and that is uh, benefits that uh, your organization will acquire for a certain uh, cause of action that you, you want to follow, as opposed to resources, and that is the cost. So. For each of the decisions that, that we will look at, you always have to 
get back and fit it in this context. Where does it fit? How does, it, uh, how does each alternative uh, benefit your organization? And which cost would you incur uh, in your organization by following that uh, alternative? And you, you have uh, scores for each of the aspects that you have to consider. These are the aspects of uh, uh, b b value and fit, and that is the benefits. And those are the uh, items of uh, cost. So you have to assess the cost that each, uh, you are, each of the alternative will result into versus the benefit. So the first uh, decision is uh, the digital business channel priorities. Today, with the internet, we know that companies are faced with uh, alternative channels that you can choose. You have multiple channels that you can choose. But we can divide this into uh, two main channels, and that is bricks and clicks. That is offline channels and online channels. And this is a, a decision that you have to, to make for your business. Which channel do you want to use? Whether you want to use uh, online channels or you want to use offline channels. Bricks, uh, offline, clicks stands for uh, online channels. There are businesses that are completely uh, online based. Uh, th those are what we call the pure play uh, digital enterprises. But we also know that still physical uh, channels are Im important uh, to many businesses. So you need to find a, the right balance between physical channels and online uh, channels for your uh, organization. So this uh, uh, graph shows the different uh, options or different positions that you can occupy. So you can either choose to be bricks, uh, bricks and mortar, and that is completely offline, or you can choose to be somewhere in the middle where you have a, a mix of both bricks and clicks that are partly online, partly uh, offline, or you can choose to have a, a full online presence and have nothing to do with a, a physical or offline distribution. But of course, this depends on your uh, nat on nature of the business you are doing, but at least you know this is one of the decisions that you, as a uh, manager of a digital enterprise that you will be faced with. And as I said when it w w uh, before I started the, uh, analyzing the decision, you have to make cost-benefit analysis. So always the decision whether to be here, here, or there should base on what benefits your organization will acquire by selling only online versus the cost. Likewise, if you choose bricks and clicks, that is combination of offline and online, what are the benefits and what are the costs? So always you have to make uh, the cost-benefit analysis of whatever option that you, 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 you are faced with. Second uh, decision is uh, market and product development uh, uh, strategy. So here you need to decide which markets do you want to operate. It is very uh, important to be specific uh, with regard to the, uh, to the markets, uh, segments that you would like to, to serve, and products that you would like to serve those markets uh, uh, with. And just as with distribution channels, you will always face with uh, alternatives that you will have different market segments at your, uh, that you will encounter or face, and you have to choose. And selection of uh, market segments that you have to save will also based on cost uh, benefit analysis. Which one, uh, which of the market segments is best for your, for your business? So this is a, a, a matrix that uh, provides a, a framework for uh, making a choice of uh, either uh, markets or products that you would like uh, uh, to, to serve with, and how internet can be used in each one uh, of those. So you have uh, two options for, for, the, uh, for products, and that is either to introduce new products or to offer existing products versus 
two options for the market growth, and that is either to serve new markets or existing markets. And for each one of these, which the two by two matrix gives you for sales, there are different uh, approaches that you can use internet uh, to make your business competitive. Competitive. So, for instance, if you choose to save uh, existing market with the existing products, you can use the internet to increase your uh, market share by being by helping you to compete. Uh, much more aggressively online. You can use the internet to increase uh, customer service, and that is by converting some of your customers that buy uh, in physical stores to, uh, to your uh, online store. You can use uh, internet to improve uh, customer value, increase uh, the service. So it's the same products the same market, but you use the internet to increase the value of the products by providing uh, service and the amount of profit that you can capture uh, from uh, your, your, your sales. But also, you can choose to introduce new products in the existing uh, market. And by new products, doesn't necessarily need to be completely novel uh, products. It could be adding uh, value to the existing uh, pr products uh, you have. It could be developing uh, digital products that uh, did not exist uh, given the uh, physical stores context. Or it could be introducing a new method of uh, payment. For instance, uh, instead of uh, selling a, a, an album with uh, 12 uh, tracks, Online uh, uh, channels give you an opportunity to price individual uh, uh, tracks. So uh, the internet can pro uh, help you to pr come up with new uh, revenue uh, models, as, as we discussed uh, when we talked about uh, uh, business models and revenue uh, models. But also, it can help you to provide uh, product, uh, to increase product range. We know that physical uh, stores are limited in terms of uh, space. If Amazon was a physical store, they wouldn't manage to keep the, the range of products they have today uh, online. So you can save existing markets with new products by being able to extend the product range that you can offer. And likewise, you can choose to offer existing products to new markets. That is, the internet can provide you with opportunity to penetrate into markets that uh, uh, you wouldn't otherwise be able to penetrate if you had to use uh, physical uh, channels. Or lastly, you can use, introduce new products in new uh, markets. Now, these are options. And as I said, when you create your strategy, you, you are faced with these choices, where to operate in these alternatives. Your selection of each one of these should base on cost-benefit analysis, as, uh, as I said. Third decision is positioning and differentiation strategies. So you're operating in a market uh, space that is uh, also occupied by other competitors. You need to define your position to distinguish yourself from other uh, 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 players in that uh, context. And for that case, you need to make choices on how you are going to compete in that uh, market. And positioning uh, can be done uh, with respect to three variables. That is, one, product uh, quality, second, service quality, and last one, price and fulfillment time. When we're I introduced these calls, uh, calls. We talked about customer perceived value. And then we said pricing of your product depends on how much uh, value customers uh, perceive. So if this is the price that you are, you are charging, and this is the cost of the inputs uh, to your, to, to your uh, uh, business, this is the total value that you are, you, you are creating. And this is the value that 
customers in. We or we call it um, uh, um, consumer surplus. And that is the difference between what price customers pay and what value actually they believe the product they acquire is. Now, the formula, looking at those three variables, product quality, service quality, price and uh, uh, fulfillment uh, uh, time, we say perceived value will be is equal to product quality multiply service quality divide by price and fulfillment time. Now, if you look at this uh, formula, whenever this figure increases, this will be decreasing, right? That each time you charge higher price and the products are delivered, the fulfillment time is not satisfactory, then the value achieved, uh, perceived by the customer will keep on decreasing because increasing this figure will lower the, what we obtain on this uh, ratio. So it is very uh, important that you take uh, the right uh, decision with respect to product quality and the quality of the uh, service that you, you intend to provide to your, your customer relative to price and fulfillment time. And you need to create a right uh, balance that will make you stay uh, competitive. There are four options that uh, you, you need to, uh, to consider when it comes to positioning and differentiation strategy. One is pro uh, product uh, performance excellence. That is, you need to increase the quality of your, 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 your product. Price performance excellence, the lower price you can offer, the more attractive you will uh, 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 appear to your, to your customers. And this will help you to retain your, your customers and even attract uh, new uh, customers. So you always have to look for ways to offer competitive uh, prices in the market. And then transactional e excellence, the kind of experience that you provide to your uh, customers when they are transacting with your business is also uh, very important. Providing them with uh, information about the, the product, after-sales service, and all these are uh, together form uh, the experience that your, your customers that will have when interacting with your business. And this will define how competitive uh, you will stay in the market. And then relation, uh, relationship uh, excellence. For instance, by being able to personalize your offerings to your customers, that can help you to differentiate your, your business from uh, competitors. Another decision is uh, business uh, service and revenue models. The internet today has brought about uh, different uh, business uh, models and you need to decide which model do you want to, 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 to use. And that is which method do you want to use when it comes to uh, value creation, value delivery, and value uh, capture. And as I said uh, earlier, business models today have become an uh, uh, important source of competitive uh, advantage in, in the market space. So it's very important to consider the alternative business models. If you can recall, we discussed about different business models uh, in this class. So you have to review the different options you have and choose the one that is uh, best for your uh, organization. Another uh, decision that you will have to face is marketplace uh, restructuring. That positioning yourself in, in the market to in order to stay competitive may require substantial changes uh, with, with respect uh, to, to, to the position of your organization in, in its value chain. And as we saw, uh, the internet has led to disintermediation. That is elimination of uh, uh, distribution agents. 
reintermediation in, in some uh, uh, businesses where new intermediaries are introduced, or counter mediation where organizations are creating parallel uh, distribution agents. Now, you, you have to make a, a choice of where do you want to position your business in your value chain, and whether that position is useful or uh, is profitable to your organization or not. Another choice that you have to make is uh, supply chain management uh, uh, capabilities. And here you have uh, three important choices that you have to, to make. And that w one is how should you integrate your business with your uh, suppliers? To what extent uh, should you integrate your operations with those of your uh, suppliers? Do you need an explanation uh, for that matter or not? Which types of materials and interactions with suppliers should you support through e-procurement? You now today, with the uh, internet, there are more options for uh, organization to purchase uh, uh, their materials and other inputs uh, to, to their b businesses. And whether e-procurement is relevant to, to your organization or not is one of the questions that you have to uh, decide as part of supply chain strategy. We, we will have... Um, a discussion on supply chain management strategy in more details in the next uh, in the next chapter. And finally, whether you should participate in the online marketplaces to reduce cost or not, and that is online market spaces for suppliers. Decision number seven is uh, internal uh, knowledge uh, management capabilities. We know that. Uh, Knowledge is a core resource uh, for, for most uh, organizations, and you need to make choices on how you manage the, the knowledge resources that your uh, organization uh, has. And this has to do with qu questions such as how can you extend the internal network of your organization to facilitate knowledge sharing among different functional areas within mm -hmm. your, your, your organization and whether uh, you can disseminate and promote sharing of knowledge between employees to improve uh, competitiveness. So it's very important that you make relevant strategies for knowledge uh, generation within an organization, as well as knowledge uh, sharing in order to enhance value creation uh, in your organization. And the last uh, decision is, uh, organizational resources and capabilities. And here is the recognition of the fact that usually when you create a, a digital uh, strategy for your organization, there will be substantial changes depending on the extent to, uh, to which your, uh, how digital your organization is, there will be uh, substantial changes within an organization. And you need to address uh, several uh, issues that are related to structural changes that will happen as a result of adapting a digital uh, strategy. First is an, an approach to creating a strategy will definitely uh, change. And with this uh, 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 new uh, digital strategy, you need to have uh, a different process for creating strategy. As we said uh, in this class, uh, uh, earlier that strategy formulation is a continuous process and you need to have a, a framework uh, for creating and maintaining your uh, digital enterprise uh, strategy. Structure of the organization will, will, will change and this will may uh, involve even elimination of some of the functional areas within your uh, organization. So it, it is very important that you make assessment of the uh, various organizational uh, uh, structural uh, adjustments that, that need to be taken. But also, we know that implementing digital strategies costly, and sometimes senior managers may not be very supportive. So you need to have a, a, a justification and build a business case to convince the ma management for the uh, uh, for the relevant investments that are needed in, in order for the digital strategy to, to
to, to take off. And rather, you need also to consider marketing uh, integration. And th this means that when you implement uh, a, a digital strategy, it's very important for marketing uh, function to be integrated with other functions. Because in this case, the, the marketing functions plays uh, a decisive uh, role for the competitiveness of uh, the organization. So you have to identify the various uh, departments that have to be uh, integrated with marketing. And usually, the IT uh, department is one of the departments that uh, necessarily have to be integrated with uh, marketing in order for a business to, to take advantage of the uh, opportunities that the, the, the internet uh, is providing to today. <coughs> and the last uh, part of strategy is implementation. And that is planning, execution, and control. Now, in this case, what we are doing is to define the various activities that will help us implement those choices we have made on the, among the eight uh, strategic decisions we, we, we have gone through. In each one of them, you will make a choice. We saw there are different alternatives that you will be faced with. But in each of them, there will be a choice that you will make. After making that choice, you need to take actions. And that is to get those choices in action. Because if you, you have uh, objectives and those objectives are not translated into uh, actions, they remain mere intentions. So eventually, you need to take action to implement those um, uh, choices that we, we have made. And to discuss implementation, this is a, we will move down to the organizational uh, structure to functional areas that the actions that have to be taken will vary from different functional areas that an organization has. And for that matter, we will look in detail at different areas where relevant actions can be taken in order to achieve strategic objectives that we have set. And that will be first supply chain uh, management strategies. And this will be a subject of chapter seven and eight. Digital marketing strategies, chapter eight and nine. Planning, scheduling, and change management, chapter 10. Digital business analysis and design, chapter 11. And finally, implementation, maintenance, and control, which means we are now coming to an end of this topic. The rest of the chapters that we will cover in this uh, class in those respective topics will address the uh, different aspects of implementation. And as I said, next week I will receive, uh, re release another part of the assignment, and that will be the last part uh, of the assignment. will be relatively much bigger, but you will have more time to, to uh, accomplish it. And that's it. I'll see you next week. <laughs>